Hey, welcome back guys. Today I'll be working on a portrait. Uh, today I found this online. I really like this image. Um, the camera doesn't do a lot of justice to this image, so I'll put a good picture of this image. So the first thing I want to do is kind of figure out the size of this. And I'm going to do the face roughly that big. So that is not side size. It is automatically, wow, it's about as long as my pencil here. And as tall as a pencil, so I'm going to make the head about that tall. And I'll add the spacer in. My handy dandy spacer. It's been in all my videos. And uh, that should work out pretty well. I'm using an HB pencil today. And let's see if it focuses now once I get it out of her view. I have an HB. There it is. And I will be starting to get the basic shape right off the bat. And the first thing I'm doing when I'm looking at this portrait is I'm trying to make some general large shape decisions. She's looking directly at the camera, um, which means that there's going to be a lot of symmetry. So it's safe to assume that everything is going to be perpendicular. It may be a little off, but for the sake of this video, I am going to um, assume that it is very perpendicular now the height up from the corner of the eye to the corner of the eye somewhere around here and I'm going to measure that up somewhere around here now from the chin to the hairline not the shadow although the shadow and the hairline I'm gonna to go to the shadow straight up on that line looks like it's gonna be about About that far which means the top of the head down to the shadow mark sorry the camera keeps going crazy these cameras sometimes look for the face recognition and when the face is hidden then it goes for the light value so you get these massive shifts in color okay so that, that works for me those are my general shapes on the head right off the bat that's how much I know uh, the width of the face, I'm going to go from the center line, and then I'll assume symmetry. And then the hair can follow around the shape. So let's get the general shape, and that's coming out from the center of the eyes, a point I already know. And if I move it over, it's about that far out to the edge of her cheekbone, somewhere around there. So I'm going to start just, see, and then the, from the corner of her mouth, let's go straight up from the bottom to the chin, Somewhere around there. And if that comes over to that point, the center of the lip follows right down the general symmetry and the... Looks like it's going to be about there. Yeah, so that works. All right, so that is somewhere like here in the left. That goes into her chin. This comes up along the cheek. This goes up into the... Seems a lot steeper than what it goes into near the temple area. And then it starts coming back towards my center line. And then the center line for her hairline is here. Something's off already. And let's let's take a look. If I go from here to here and measure it. Yeah, that's about right. So that's where the hairline is. And it'll meet somewhere up about here. Sometimes a blank piece of paper makes me want to blow things out of proportion because I'm really looking and focusing here. And I have to make sure I really measure so that I don't blow it out of proportion. Um, at least for the style that I'm doing, I've seen a lot of artists do really cool sort of large eyes, large features. And I love it. I love the different styles. But I, I like my portraits, personally, the way I do them, to have a bit more of a realistic feel. And hopefully that's why you've been subscribing. My channel's been kind of blowing up lately. Um, I went from like 20 subscribers to 500 in like a couple months, which is pretty cool. And once I get to 1,000, I plan on having like more live streams. So I can really um, give you guys a little bit more dedicated content and hear what you want to, you know, and maybe reply to what you want. Um, like I run in my camps. 
you're in the um, you're in the same time zone as me, which is Pacific Standard. You can always take a look at Bay Area Art School, sign up for Paint Club. Really get a kick out of hanging out with my students and seeing them improve. Paint Club's pretty fun. Paint Club is just a place for us to just sort of hang out and do our own projects while you can act. You know, artists like being around artists. Um, even if we don't talk to the other artists, it's nice to see their artwork. So that's what Paint Club is about. Artists being around other artists. All right, so I'm just starting to put in shapes. Everything here is kind of a guess. Um, and I'll keep going. Somewhere in here is the hair. I'm going to sweep that line in because I don't really know where it is. I'm looking for symmetry here. Chin comes to there. This is actually going to be a bit more shallow. That was one mistake. So from there to there to there to there, right? So if I measure from there to there, mark it. Wow, the chin comes way over here. And there is actually a line that comes in here as you see the plane of her face sort of shift. And it is hard to see in this drawing. Um, sometimes I alter these images in Photoshop. And maybe I will do that and superimpose it over here. In post-production. All these things that go along with just drawing. But I find that when you learn new things, if you know how to do one thing pretty well, you can follow the same kind of formula. So terminology is huge. Once you know the terminology of something, you can really know how to look it up and work with it and find more resources. So software is definitely that way. There's always more than there's usually more than one way to do something in software. Computer, internet, programs, Photoshop, so forth and so on. But the best thing to do is to learn the terminology. Okay, so the ear does something like that. Top fold comes around to the inside of the ear. This is still the outer ear, but I'm calling it more the center of the outer ear. Again, terminology, right? It's the ear, something like that. Now the nose will come down maybe that far, which means that if I want the center of the nose to be right in the right place, let's measure it. Yeah, so that is going to be the edge of her nostril and that's going to be the center. I should learn more terminology here but it's where the nostril comes together and, and goes back down into the upper lip. And again these are just starter lines. They're probably going to be wrong. So really the best thing to do is to not stress too much and once you find an area that you feel comfortable with just let it rip. I feel comfortable now with the nose um, sometimes it's the eyes, sometimes it's the lips, sometimes I need more shapes. Um, that's the center of the lip, then that's the height of the lip. And the width of the mouth, oops, it's about that much. So from here to here, roughly, she has... Very um, curvy lips. So again, with curved lines, I really want to make sure I try to figure that out with straight lines. Because straight lines are easy to measure like the apexes of the turn. Here and here is definitely going to be the top point of where the lip curves up here. And the bottom point of where it sort of flattens out and goes into the overall shadow. Um, there is an actual shadow shape. That's the center point. That touches the bottom of the lip, my point that I had measured out. I have a huge sort of dark area in here. And the shadow will, because the lip looks like it's almost touching, the top lip almost looks like it's touching the bottom lip, so that shadow would disappear if it was touching, but there's a bit of shadow underneath here where it curves, letting me know that it's slightly open, um, increasing that sort of pouty or a bigger lip effect. And let's 
Okay, so I'm including the shadow shape on that. Um, again, it, this is all just starting out. Since I'm doing this, I might as well get the shadow shape in and the shadow shape in. Now, the nose, because there's another shadow shape about here. The ridge, where the nostrils are. Let me measure from the bottom of the chin to where the nostrils kick in to just the side of the nose. There's a lot of form kind of irregularities it makes the nose difficult i feel like when you're drawing the nose you're mostly just drawing the sh uh, the shape the the gradients you can't draw a nose i mean the form comes up and over in this direction it comes down and up and down and almost under or at least almost to a point and then back down and out on her lips and if you go across here, it, it hits in and it comes out. So there's all these lines, and really what we want to draw are just really where the shadow hangs and the the light gets sort of trapped between the side of the nose and the cheek. Or if it's harsh light from one side, the highlights roll across the contours of the nose. So the nose is all about shadows. But there is a general shape. Um, in fact, it kind of looks like the space shuttle to me. Like, here's a wing, here's a wing, here's the back. These are the thrusters. <laughs> and then... Um, the, the highlight is going to be where the tip of that space shuttle is. So the highlight is above where the two eyes meet, which is my point here. What was this point here? Let's measure from here to from here to here. That was for the ears, I believe. See, I'm talking too much. I'm not paying attention. But you guys got to be entertained while I draw too, right? That's partially what makes it fun. Um... Okay, so that was where the top of the nose was the highlight. So I'll put the highlight off center so I don't get confused again. And then the eyes. So the center of the eyes, it looks like the nose, edge of the nose comes up, and then the eyes come in. Those come up. And it is a little off center. It's almost like she's facing this way. And not everybody's face is perfectly symmetric. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. Like the first time I really you know, sort of paid attention and started really looking at somebody, um, you notice all these little irregularities about them. Nobody is perfect. And it's kind of cool. It really starts, I mean, you probably notice on your own self when you look in the mirror, this in your face, you're sort of like, maybe you notice something that's not the way you think it should be or it's not symmetric. Well, guess what? We all have it. Um, I think I want one eye up here, like that one comes in slightly, and the other one comes straight up. Now the length of the eye is going to go from there to there. Bring that over, and that is a very wide eye. I mean, I know she has eyeliner on, so it goes far beyond the eye, but I'm including that. So the distance from the tip of the eyeliner to the edge of the face... It's about that distance. So let's clean up some more lines here. And let's just put these lines in because right now her eyes are closed so we can kind of get that general angled effect. And I just want to make sure I feel good about the geometry before I put in definition. If her eyes are open this would be a different story. So then we have her eyes kind of come up and then you have the actual eyelid here. Eyelid disappears behind the eye liner. It comes down. And then this is going to sort of... Do something like this. There's a mix of a shadow as well as maybe... Maybe she has some eyeliner underneath her lower lid. I don't know. Maybe a different color. But it looks mostly like a shadow. Like the shadow would come in. It would hit the outer side of the eye. And then you'd have the actual duck, the um, eyelid. So if that's the eyelid here where I'm drawing it in, I can bring that over at least to be symmetric. It's a guess, but my guess can be symmetric. So if that comes up over, that's the eyelid up here, and it'll sort of dip down. And all of this area is going to be lost, but I'd still like to practice the symmetry on it because it's the little things we don't see that make this drawing work. Um... This is looking horrific to me at this stage. Um, wherever your drawing skills are and however you say I, it does or doesn't, or you do or don't agree with me, I don't like it, which means that that's okay. I, I, uh, I can detach from what I expect it to be 
and sort of just release my expectation of what I think it should be and be able to move lines. Deep thoughts. You must not attach yourself to things. Um, <laughs> okay, so that from the... Uh, there goes the camera again, right? From the hairline down, that's going to be basically where the top of the brow is. So the top of the brow is somewhere in here. And I will free form them in measuring the distance from the side of the temple, the side of the head, to the tip of her sculpted eyelash. And that works. Her eyebrow on this side comes in for a little bit more, but there's also shadows playing here. Okay, so that, that works out. And before I make all my corrections, let's get the rest of the face in. So let's get the width from one side of the head to the other. It's always a little, it's always interesting to see how this stuff lines up, to see if I got it or not. And yeah, I'm on trajectory. So that hits here, looks like it comes out, the bottom of the nose comes over, so it's come back in. And over here, it's again, not, I keep saying this, it's not so important. What's more important is that it feels like it's not either too big or too small, it just has to fit on the actual um, figure. So the head, the face, muscles and the skin, all of this form that makes a human, the shoulders would come out. And I'll look at that, I'll zoom out. All right now I wanna keep everything a little bit more simplified for me. So the shadow will come up, it splits, hits about here. And there's my tip of my space shuttle, so that about that far over. The shadow line comes in to the edge of the eye. It follows the, the contour of the nose because the cheeks come up and out, right? So if the cheeks are coming at you and the light's coming from here, the light's going to be able to reach further in. Well, or the shadows don't drop further in, I should say. They don't get cast further in. All right, so this comes down to the left nostril, left wing of the space shuttle. I can see that it needs to come way down. And then you have... A collection of different shadows here, so I'm going to freeform them in because those are going to be, um, you know, just hair. Hair is hair doesn't stay. All right, so there's my shape. Um, it's kind of trippy, right? Because the hair actually is gonna, if I go from one side of the, let's go from one side over to where the hair falls. Something's wrong, it's telling me that it comes in here. I guess that's right. Because if that's where the shadow falls in, the absolute dark shadow comes up to here and that's where the hair is gonna. Highlight zone. comes out okay that looks kind of kind of good give some more tick marks where I think the hair should sort of all right so there's a Highlight, and now I can remove some of these other lines. That hair will actually come way out to here. It'll come down. The hair is in itself the highlight. The terminator is this line, and then we have the 
form shadow of the hair, which is a collected form of all the hair. And then the cheek, you can see that cheek. So the cheek here and here. So this is the outline of her face to her hair and the shadow that makes it. That happens somewhere over here. And then it drops down because the hair may come right up to her or the shadow just disappears. Again, you can't see it in my version here. So I'm going to try to let you guys see. Now I'll put up, I'll put a photo up here after I get, you know, permission from the photographer. If we do do this, you guys, and you do use his image and you find it, I encourage you to find him on Instagram. You can always find my actual art website too, which is different from the Bay Area Art School, which is, you know, my business. I love drawing. I love teaching. Um, I love teaching art. And you can find my artwork. I'll put that up here too, but it's, um, my handle is, is that art. I had a really rude roommate in college. He used to come out in the middle of the night when I was painting things and go, is that art? So I was like, yeah, I don't know, but that's a really cool name. So that became my handle for a lot of things on the web for a while. All right, so now I'm starting to clean up. Some lines here. Um, so the face looks pretty good to me. There's going to be some shadows in here. There is a bit of a shadow line that comes from here to here. So you can put that line on. There's a, a, a line here where the shadow from the lip. So you have a cast shadow from her lip. It falls, actually falls out to here, then cuts across. She must have a really full lips because, um, well, maybe that's the effect of how she's posing for this photograph because there's really a dark shadow here. It lightens up here and then it sort of just disappears into the form itself right around here. And you actually have form shadow here. So form shadow meets cast shadow, creating a terminator. And the terminator, in this case, has reflected light from this warm wall that's not indirect sunlight, but clearly she's must be near something very bright because it's bouncing up and you get all of this really beautiful um, sort of um, orangish, magenta-ish, like uh, reflected light from the wall. So that terminator falls all the way up to the cheek to about here. And that is a terminator form. That is her. And that is a simplified line. And that line should, there's that fun word, should actually mimic a line from here over to here. Now she looks like Iron Man. Um, so if we get Iron Woman. <laughs> so if we get rid of that line though, that line doesn't exist there. What it happens here is it it sort of is implied. It does let me know that this needs to come in a bit more. And then the shadow comes down and then you have a darker shadow where it separates to here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. That's a good start. So let me zoom out now. And this is the whole photograph. This, this is a great photograph. I can't believe he uploaded this. Very generous of him. Okay, so this is going to be her cast shadow. Cast shadow will fall over to here. Her shirt. Let's see how far down her, her shirt is. So the relationship between this distance is going to equal from about here to there, right? That's going to be how far down the shirt is. And I'm holding on to my pencil and keeping the distance because just like working with, you know, in a shop, wood shop, tools, you want to make sure you measure twice. Um, not that it's as big a deal because with wood, once you cut wood, you could potentially ruin the piece of wood. With paper, the tendency is to just keep moving on. Okay, so I got a loose line in there because, again, I don't know where things go. And I'm still working with this HB. I should probably move over to an H soon. I think you guys are seeing that pretty well, right? Whoops. Okay. So that looks good. 
and I forgot the shadow shape up in here. So the shadow shape comes along the inside of the brow, across the, the, the brow line in the center, and comes down to here. And um, then the brow overhangs and drops a, it looks like it's going to be about here. And this will come to about here. I still think her nose is too, I made her nose too wide. So I need to fix that. And then now we're kind of outlining the other side of the space shuttle here. This is like where the cargo door opens up, you know, like the space shuttle. If this was the, if this was the front of the space shuttle and this is the back wings and this is like the cargo doors. <laughs> In this case, it, it actually shows up. So you never know what part of the space shuttle you're going to draw. I used this analogy once with one of my students, and it like it opened new doors for her. So I, I hope this analogy is useful for you in terms of drawing a nose and it being like a space shuttle. Um, I do not think this woman's nose looks anything actually like a space shuttle. I feel like if you were to actually call someone, oh, your, your nose looks like the space shuttle, they might be horribly offended. Unless they just absolutely loved... The space program, NASA, science fiction, and even then it'd be a risk. But in general, for all people, their noses kind of look like the space shuttle. All right, hammered that one in enough, I think. So there's the Terminator. There's the end of the highlight. I don't normally put the ends of the highlights in, but I'm putting it in here because it's helping me figure out where things go. A lot of lines on that face. It's looking good. She has a couple of hair clips. Let's see. The ear comes in. This comes up. Switches over. Yeah, that means this eyebrow and the eye here. And something happens here. And there's a bit of a form shape. And then she has these hair clips here. So all of that just to get the hair clips in. You know, these little accents um, when you're doing portraits, and you get to read so much about a person's expression um, often. And then you also get to see how they just sort of, you know, it's fun to put the embellishments on, all the little bells and whistles, and in this case, all the highlights. So that's why we save all the details for last, because it's like eating dessert. You want to eat dessert last, you get all the healthy stuff. The healthy food down first. <laughs> um... At least that's what I was told to do. Okay, so the hair comes over, sort of curly, and I like how it just sort of... We have, the hair does other things here, which I can add in later. And then there's some... Highlights here, and this one looks like it almost sort of lines up like this. There's no real rhyme or reason to the hair, but I do want to make sure that the curls are at least in the same scale. So this is where her clavicles meet up, base of the neck into the sternum. It's right in the middle there almost. Somewhere around here. That means this happens a little higher. That does come over there. And then you have the separation of the neck. You have one of the muscles that goes up. It's all very subtle. In fact, I think I'm going to ignore that because it's so subtle that it's something I could add last. Um, so right now I'm just looking for the shapes. Again, I really want people to spend more time looking at the overall drawing in her face because that's what a portrait usually is. Or the relationship of her and whatever other objects, you know, prominent objects may be in there. Like, if you were doing a portrait of a violinist, it would clearly be her and her cat in the violin. Okay, that, that feels pretty decent. So, the, the width from the shoulder, 
patches from there to the ear. So from there to the ear. Yeah, I can make it a little bit more narrow. That's fine. So now that's my first draft for the face. And uh, it's been blocked in. At this point, you know, I could tape it up and paint it in acrylic. But I'm going to uh, take a quick break and I'm going to come back and uh, clean these lines up better. And I think I'm going to switch over to an H. All right, I'm back, and I'm going to do a little bit of work on the face now. And um, now it's time to move things around and make sure that they look right. And by right, I mean better. And I, I can see a whole bunch of things going on here. I can see the nose is too wide. Um, I can just make sure I'm in a similar comparative size. Close to side size as possible. That is pretty good. That's good enough for now. Yeah, the nose is way too wide. So I'm going to get my little eraser here, my handy dandy Mono Zero. These things are awesome. I can't emphasize getting enough of these. They're getting this enough. They are, are essential. They've become an essential tool for me. Um, so now I'm going to start carving out and trying to figure out the widths of everything here. Just eyeballing it, I can see that it's just a little bit longer than the lead. Which means it still needs to come in probably a millimeter on both sides. And I've moved my pencil to an H. And... Everything I do, I need to really try to not see the face. When you start seeing a face or the personality and not the lines, you can get lost pretty quickly. It's important to see the personality and the personality lines, but I feel like that's something that's in the very beginning and at the very, in the middle, it's just, how close am I to just accurate? Um, all right, let's get to working on the back side of the space shot a little bit. That works pretty good. So that looks a lot better to me just by narrowing the nose her whole face is going to narrow because that distance from here to here was right but now it needs to shift all of it inwards which means the terminator if i go from the center of the eye down or over it's probably about here so the terminator comes over a bit too and i i'm going to start erasing some of these long lines and making them more Um, I'm going to start putting in shorter lines. And this line comes here. There's a form shift here. Reflected light grabs. And there's probably just a little bit of that leftover form shadow under her nose that drops right. Okay, that's the center. And then drops down to here. And then kind of dips up. So I'm going to include it. But really, I know that's not... This is reflected light on this side. But it does help define some of her uh, fa face, facial features. Words escape me. My primary language is not always efficient. Why can't you guys out there in YouTube land read my thoughts? That would make all this so much easier. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, let's, let's bring the bottom lip. And some of the thoughts that I had about the lips being too tall are getting answered now. And that's a really fine line. There's a ridge here of reflected light. Then there's a bit of a curve. It's not a sharp point. And then this is not parallel because this form starts going down. If I'm looking at her, the cheek starts curving away from me. And this form, the, the cheek is curving up at me as a form curve. So therefore, they can't be parallel. So those are little things that are going to play games with you unless you really understand how the face works. And, you know, I mean, you have a face readily available. If you have a mirror, you can always kind of like trace your own face. We're all similar enough that a lot of these contours are going to be very, very... Um, are gonna be, it's going to be relative... It's going to be available to you to get the basic understanding of how the form works. So when I'm talking about shapes, 
and contours and planes of the face. I'm talking about just if you were to put a perpendicular mark off every plane, the forehead, like she's a unicorn, this this is going to come almost at us. It's kind of a neutral gray. If I were to this nose is not parallel. If I were to put a perpendicular line to the ridge of that line to that nose, it's actually going to point up. So because the light's up here, the whole nose is going to be a lighter value. I'm not talking about the reflection. Reflections are something else. Um, the reflections are going to be... They're, they're a different thing. I'm just talking about the values as they relate to the planes of the face. So this line here, how the nose goes up, is going to relate to the lip as it goes up. It's going to relate to the chin as it goes up. And then the chin curves far enough away so it's underneath. And you have a form shadow because the form turns and... It's just no longer in the light. Whereas the top of the lip would be in the light if there was no nose. But this is a cast shadow and it casts a shadow over it. Kind of like if you're standing next to a tall building or mountain and the sun setting, it casts a shadow over you. Whereas if there was like just sun setting on the ocean, non-issue, you'd totally be able to see it and you'd get light. So these are all considerations that have to be thought about to be good at portraiture. I don't know if I consider myself good at it. I, I feel like I'm pretty good at it. I feel like there are some out there who are just masterful. Um, I've seen David Casson do his portraits in person and that was awe-inspiring. Um, but hey, we all have uh, we all have people we have in high regard. Okay, so that that's looking better. Let's get the contour. Sorry, the the outline of the face. I want to get this outline. So this is way too high. I made her look like a wicked princess in a Disney movie. It's gonna be more subtle. In fact, and the point now is to really sort of refine my lines a little bit better. And understand what's really happening in there. This is all eyelashes. And that's tear duct. It's all shadow. There's a slight sliver of light right here. Indicating where. The upper lid. Sort of bulges out. Because all the follicles. Grab into the end of the. Eyelid. So you have that sort of reflected light here and here. On both sides of her. So I can have stark, just little juts of light to kind of indicate where that's going to go. I'm going to remove this dark line here because it's all in the shadow over here. And... you heard me say it before, everything is a guess in the beginning. We don't know anything other than there's a piece of paper and a pencil in our hand, and we have to, we have to figure it all out. And you're not going to get everyone right. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to put, put it away when you don't get it right, so you don't get too frustrated, and then come back to it later on. I like how this hair comes along the edge here. That's kind of cool. It's actually beautiful shadow lines. And the eye is going to come in a little bit further. Because if the nose came in, right, then the eyes are going to come closer together. That's going to answer some questions I had at the beginning of this video. I'm quite sure. I almost forgot about that. And as I get close to figuring out and feeling confident that things are in the right place, I, I lightly shade them in. I'm in an H now which I've said now probably three times, and um, I can shade, which means if I erase it, it's not going to have stained the paper as bad as that HB. Um, all of that's going to be dark, and it curves. 
have sort of a random zigzag pattern. I don't look at the exact placement of all the hairs here. I want it to feel more true unto itself. So at some point I depart from the reality and start conceptualizing or imagining with a degree of logic to it. And I do my, my own version. Cool. Um, I think the head, I'm going to bring it up a little bit higher. That's going to make her look a little bit more I'm going to answer some other questions too. And that's where the hair comes to. And then it curves. Alright, so clean those lines up. Students used to ask me, how long do you refine for? And I think in the beginning, because you, and if you're following this, there's so much stuff on YouTube from the, you know, just the crazy pets and the just weird things that are out there and people just trying to do just bizarre things. Like if you're watching art, then you're probably trying to create art that's amazing and that you're proud of. And so in the beginning, when you're learning how to do this stuff, don't worry about time. Just do it. Till it's right. Put in the put in the hard work. Till you feel proud of it. Then you know you can do it. And then do it again. Again, don't worry about time. I mean, if you've this is with portraiture, specifically with portraiture, not with block and boot camps or drawing in general, especially for a beginner. I'm talking as an amateur or someone who's been spending a lot more time with your artwork. And then eventually, as you know you can do it, and your confidence goes up, and your understanding of the face goes up, and planes and structure, you'll want to try to speed up. Because that, at least I did, that was like the game for me. Okay, now I know I can do this, so can I get faster? And what's fun about faster is your style starts showing up, your your you know your energy signature your, is left on your work if you go slow enough in the beginning it becomes academic and this beautiful academic work that comes out of places like grand central stay grand central ateliers and all these classical realism ateliers around the world the students put out a beautiful work but it it's academic there's not a lot of individuality there's not a lot of expression to it so you have to break away. And I think you find it through speed. So, you know, being able to draw something in the beginning like this for me, unthinkable. But eventually, you get faster and you get better. A good friend of mine used to race mountain bikes. You can actually check him out at a single track mine. On Instagram, that's a single track mine, as in mountain biking is all about being on the single track for the purest. And he goes to pump tracks and he does all kinds of he does all kinds of crazy stuff. He's and um, teaches people how to ride. And I asked him, I said, "How does someone get really good where they're just doing backflips off these jumps?" And the answer was. You do the jumps so many times that eventually you get bored and you have to show off. That the adrenaline rush is gone from just jumping in the air so you have to do something else. And I don't think it's much different from doing any artwork. You just do it so much that eventually you have to push the edge of what you're capable of and you have to push the edge of what you want your work to look like. And a part of it's unconscious. Not everyone can do those crazy backflips. Not everyone can do these drawings. And no one can do it in your style. So to find it, I think, just set yourself free. And By the way, I'm not saying to go out and try and do a backflip to become a better drawer. Quite the contrary. But I do love me some good single track. You can check him out. His name's Dylan Wren. He grew up in the mountains. 
He was a mountain bike racer, now he's a mountain bike trainer, ride coach, all around radical dude. That's my plug for the night. Okay, so something here is not right. So the shirt to the chin. And once again, so my drawing, I'm noticing there's too much space here. So the sh chin to the shirt goes from the chin to the, again, at the center of the forehead. So from here to here, comes from here to here. So that's right. But this is down, so I need to bring this line down. Curve it around, drop it in. Do that, a couple of random hairs. Get the bigger eraser. And I think I'm getting close. And this is looking a lot better. So I'm gonna put some more curved lines in. The hair is gonna be more fluid. Wave upon waves of curls or waves. I don't think she has curls, I think she has waves. If she's watching this, I'm sure she's been offended by it. many things I've said about her from her spit from the space shuttle nose to waves opposed to curly hair. Forgive me. I'm just trying to teach people how to draw. <laughs> And I think this is a stunning photograph. You are a lovely model. This is a great photograph. It's great lighting. And of course, in doing a portrait where the eyes, she's looking down, you kind of don't have to do the whole eyes. So this is a, probably a good intermediate drawing in that sense that there's no eyes. Advanced because there's so much shadow and still form that you would really want to really work on these gradients in here Where the light is and the correct values Comes down, let's look over here. Some of it shoots out If some of you have seen my paintings that I've created, you can go to um, Badowski.net. That's, um, I'll put it up here, Badowski.net. And um, I've done a lot of wave paintings. And, and doing the wave paintings broke me out of my academic studies. I did, you know, I knew how to draw fairly well, but I really wanted to learn how to draw. So I went to an atelier here in the city and I learned a lot of classical realism. And some of it just was wonderful and really resonated with me and some of it just felt like it didn't. Most of it did. Good teachers where I got to see David Cass and draw. And um Dude, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. I'm not even gonna edit this out because it getting close to the end of the drawing so I'm getting that happy feeling I'm happy with this it looks good so I think I'm good um, whoops and thanks for watching guys I'll include a final photo of this um, maybe I'll quickly shade it in real quick so I'm gonna speed that up so you guys can take a look at it Oh yeah, wave paintings. Wave paintings broke me out of my academic drawing, or academic style. It's so important that I learn how to do things quote unquote the right way, which really doesn't exist. But I wanted to feel a certain way about my art, and I did, and I knew I could do it. But the waves, doing the waves, man, I, they're just freeing. So you can take a look at it. Um, you guys request it maybe I'll show a wave painting but mostly that's for me you know you gotta save a piece of art you gotta save a piece of something for you it's just you
It is kind of a sloppy final shading here. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Maybe I'll include even another final where I do more shading on it. Uh, again, this was mostly just about the block in and the face. Thanks for watching. Um, enjoy drawing. Take care.